Hi, my name is Ignacio Rodriguez. I am the owner and CEO of AVR Studios and IR Architects. I am a licensed architect practicing here in the state of California. We have an architecture firm uh, that does both architecture, interior design, and structural engineering. AVR Studio started from the idea of trying to communicate to clients a clearer perspective of exactly what it is that we're building. Um, we specialize in homes that range between five million and two hundred million dollars. So, it's they're pretty pretty significant endeavors and. Nine times out of 10, clients aren't quite clear on exactly what it is that we're doing. And so that then triggers a series of delays in construction, change orders, and a series of, of you know revisions to all the drawings and, and just a massive amount of, of expenses. So that's basically, that was the foundation to what we have. And, and so now we've created our own kind of technology for what we do and, and you know, and giving clients the opportunity to really see their product way before they start building. It started, uh, I want to say Christmas several years ago. I think my brother-in-law had uh, an Oculus and we we're playing super hot and it was pretty cool. And, and what I realized is I think in the lobby of, super, uh, of the Oculus, it's kind of an architecture environment, but you can't really move around. You kind of see stuff, but it's not quite right. And then I quickly realized, oh, wow, I could actually use this as, as a tool. I could build this as a service. For my clients and so that's kind of where the idea started now it's actually become a standard in our practice uh, and our clients expect it and I think most importantly that we haven't really discussed is we've actually sold um, three houses in VR for uh, roughly I think a total of just over 12 million dollars so clients are actually now understanding what it is the technology they're they're embracing it and most importantly, they're starting to see the benefit of it because we're finding that, you know, for them, it, it could be a cost savings of anywhere between five and 10% of the construction costs, which is a significant amount of money. The, our process to um, to create uh, the environments is it does utilize the game engine and it does utilize all of our architectural tools here in the office. And then we have a series of coders in staff that then code uh, for the the architectural environment to do different features like opening doors, fireplaces, water features, appliances, lights, night scenes, uh, cars moving around, people moving around, different things like that. But yes, yeah, so we're we're utilizing all the tools, and then and then we have staff that kind of is there to kind of put it all together, you know, to make it all work as one, and then optimizing the files because these are some massive environments you know a lot of times you see you know like a nice kitchen or a nice living room but we do the entire environment from the street all the way out to the pool so that's every bedroom every bathroom every closet every every media room pool cabanas kitchens dining rooms wine rooms garages all that stuff and if you're talking about a 200 million dollar house you know you're talking about a 12 car garage talking 20 plus bedrooms I mean they're really big environments we're basically building entire games like video games like an entire an entire world of it because you know you're accessing all sides of the property so it's they're, they're quite big endeavors that that you know to create the, the the environment it's quite a challenge on the architecture side we use everything from AutoCAD SketchUp 3d Max Rhino if it's our firm, we use Revit, but some are, we do work for other architecture firms. So some other firms don't have that. So it just depends. But basically every firm, every software that architecture firms are using is what we're using on our side. And then on top of that, we're using Unreal. And then we have proprietary code that we're running and, and, and a program that we run on our side to optimize and, and develop the, and clean up the files. We, we're, I, I would say we're small size on the VR we have right now on the coding we have three people doing coding um, we have and we have three artists and then myself as an architect with a couple of job captains on my side and then we have an interior designer who comes in and makes sure that everything that's actually going in the house is to the aesthetic or to the design direction that the the designers are going for so we probably have about at any given point in time, about 10, 10 people 
in the arch- in, in the whole environment. And then there's admin staff that, you know, come in to make sure that all the projects are working correctly and all that fun stuff. So maybe 12. And we've done about, about 35 projects to date, 35 projects. And uh, lately, what we've been actually now embarking upon is more of the commercial side, trying to, to capture the hospitality markets, the retail markets, because a lot of times, you know, especially in retail, how the customer gets to experience whatever the vision is, is like mission critical. And a lot of times, you know, they don't get it right. And you don't get it right, it affects your sales, it affects the performance of the company. And so we're actually working with some retail companies where they're really fine tuning the customer experience before they start swinging any hammer. So they're really figuring out what you what's the first thing that you see subliminally, what you want to put in the background, you know, all the furniture, is it too high, is it too low, how does it feel, what's the ambiance. So we're we're giving them the opportunity to really get in there and um, and work that out before they spend any money on the construction end. One of the big uh, investors here in LA, he's building his own house and he hired all the top designers and the drawings were completely done, permits were issued. Then he hired us and said, hey, this kind of cool stuff, could you just do my house before I spend, you know, $25 million, can you just do it? And the cost for our services is minuscule compared to, um, you know, what they're gonna spend or what they're gonna save. Um, but so we did it and um, and I'm talking lighting design, interior design, architecture, civil, structural, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. I mean, low voltage, all the packages, 300 plus sheets. So we grab all of that, we put it in the VR, he walks in the house and his first comment is, why is the stair in front of the door? And you know, we're all looking at each other like, I don't know what, I don't know what to say. I mean, it's, it's literally in every drawing. And for whatever reason, he just didn't understand it. And so in architecture, so you know, you move the stair, the stair's like the heart of the house. You move the stair, you're talking huge revisions so but here's the thing he was going to move that stair regardless whether he moved it today or he moved it once all the foundations were poured and these guys were going so by him getting in front of it i mean on a 25 million dollar build in just revisions alone he saved a couple million bucks and delays and not only that you know, he didn't have to redo his foundation twice. He actually got all the consultants to update their drawings. More importantly, he got to competitively bid the project before awarding the contract. Because see, once you award a contract, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're really, you know, committed to this contractor. And if he wants to charge you a significant amount of money once the project's going, it's not a lot you can do. And so, but if you can negotiate that way before you award that contract, I mean, it puts you in a way better position. So for him now, it's the, every project that he's developing or he's involved with, he asks that he walk it in VR just so he understands what what he's getting himself into, which is which is pretty cool. And we have a, we have a bunch of developers like that that they just have so many projects going and they see the plans and they understand them, but then they want to they they're like, I just want to walk the house. So could you just now it's a matter of how fast can you do it and. You know, we've been consolidating our time frames. We used to, it used to take us about two months to do the environments and to kind of do the entire house. And we've consolidated that to about two and a half weeks. So for these clients, I mean, so you wait two and a half weeks, it's, it's not the end of the world in any way, shape or form. And they're able to really get in there. And I kid you not, 10 times out of 10, they're making changes. They always are. We use a several several units, but we only present in the HTC Vive. HTC Vive, from my, from what I've tried on, is the best headset. Oculus is good, but they have some distortion, and the cameras aren't great, and it's, it doesn't, in my opinion, it doesn't work. But because the Oculus is cheaper, we develop everything in, in Oculus in-house. So all the all the coders, all the artists, they all have Oculus on their desks. But for presentation purposes, we only use HTC Vives. And then we have a couple of, you know, um, we also we also make it so you know, so that we can use like the Samsung headset. So you can walk around with the Samsung headset. You just got to use the buttons here. But, but you can virtually walk through every one of these houses and do the same experience. 
the performance is not as good, you know, the quality is not as amazing, but still works just fine. The next big step for VR is a social VR. We kind of recoded the Vive setup so that we only have two cameras, but we can run two headsets at the same time. And so one person's like a passenger and typically I'm the driver. And so I'm navigating the client through the house. So as if, you know, as if when you're selling a house, as if real estate agents walking a client through a house and you give the clients the opportunity to really navigate. We also record the experiences. Their hands are coded to, um, to be able to highlight with different colors, different things they want to do. We could change materials in VR live so that if somebody says, oh, that's not the color I was thinking, we have an entire library of all surfaces from hard surfaces to soft surfaces. Uh, we have libraries for all the furniture so we can quickly remove furniture out. The, the, whole, the whole idea is we literally go inside your house and it is as if we are walking your house in real life and we can just quickly move and shake and, and move things around, you know, with just a couple clicks on, on, on the wands, which is pretty amazing. You know, most architects would disagree, but you really don't spend a lot of time looking at the architecture from the outside. You know, you kind of walk up, you see the beautiful building, and then you go inside. And so here in my office, I have this thing where I say I'm a closet interior designer, where I'm an architect, but I really, I really kind of want to be inside the building and kind of figure it out. And that's kind of why this passion for this VR kind of is there just because I want to actually see the what, what you're going to see when you walk in, right? And so that's 100% correct. So a lot of times, even with architects, you know, they, they don't have an interior design package. They just don't have it. The owners don't want to pay for it on the residential side, so it's just homes. And so then we're kind of filling in the pieces, like, hey, would you like us to do a you know, polyform kitchen? And would you like us to just kind of texture it for you? And, and that's where I think, you know, with a lot of the architects that we're working with now, it's kind of a collaborative process. Initially, I think it's seen as a little bit, um, you know, they're kind of losing control, but we're just kind of here more to help and just highlight like, hey, you may want to look at this corner or there's a beautiful view to the left, but we blocked it for whatever reason. So you may want to open that up. And and I think that's where like the magic happens. And, you know, moving a, a wall early in the project doesn't cost anybody anything. Moving it on the field, super expensive. We also have a VR room um, in our office here with a big TV, a 70 inch television. We usually ask clients to bring all the partners that are involved in the project so that whoever's walking around can actually make the comments. And then you can hear from the, you know, the kind of the, the crowd, you know, oh yeah, that's a great idea or no, no, I, I think that's a mistake. And so we're able to really get into the nuts and bolts of, of, a, of an architecture space without ever building it. Usually you're out on the field, these guys are framing and you're trying to figure out if you want to move the TV or whatever. And that's extremely expensive and extremely uh, time consuming. And so we're basically doing that in virtual reality, which is pretty cool. We're working with a company uh, that's um, out of uh, Hong Kong and they have this, this uh, virtual reality hub that they do so that multiple computers can connect all at once so that we're in one environment, which is pretty cool. And that's basically the next step. So we can, the idea, you know, almost becomes, we could even have like a little robot, you know, that's out on the actual field and we can have our headsets and we could all have a job site without having to drive. We do about 30 homes a year and I spend probably half of my time driving, just driving between job sites and job sites and job sites. And if we can consolidate that, not just for my practice, but for a lot of architects' practice, it'll it'll elim eliminate a lot of these different kind of these wasted moments. And so that's what I'm talking about when I say a social VR is where we're all able to get in one environment and, and communicate, you know, live. The items that we're actually taking to the next step is building in VR, building actually on the field in VR. And so we're, we're, we just partnered with, a, with another company who is who they actually build with AR technology. Um, and so they have all the coding for it, uh, but they, they do it for, for the government. And so we're partnering with them so that we could actually build our homes using a, a series of AR tools so that on the field, because you know these houses are, are massive, they're 75,000 square feet homes. So 
you know, you can go off and you can make a small calculate miscalculation and then everything kind of goes sideways and they're also nestled perfectly into hillsides to make sure they meet all the building height requirements and all that fun stuff. So with this AR technology that we're adding to our VR element and hopefully we'll be starting our first construction project in two months. Um, the, the AR technology will be telling the builders exactly where the house is going to go, which will be amazing. And then it'll be placing all the beams, all the structural elements. It'll give you all the surfaces. So it'll it'll start to eliminate a lot of the confusion or the misinterpretation of drawings and you know having to redo things two or three times because the framer didn't understand or the drywaller didn't understand what the detail was. Our website is uh, uh, avrstudio.us.